Hello everyone, today I'm showing you a DIY 5.8GHz SWR meter like this one. But before I get to more about this, let me show you how to create a detector for measuring SWR. To make a detector for measuring SWR, you will need the Agilent Microwave Detector HSMS-2A6K, a 0.01 microfarad ceramic capacitor, code 103, and an SMA connector like this one. You need to hook up the three together as shown in the diagram here. This is the diagram I found on the internet and basically you need to hook up the positive or diode to the signal and the ground of the diode goes to the ceramic capacitor and down to the ground of the SMA connector. Because the diode is so tiny I'm going to show you the polarity. On the diode itself, you will see the alphabet letters. And if the letters are upright, the top is ground and the bottom is positive. You only need to solder these two legs and the other four legs are not required. So how are you going to use the detector? Basically, you will need a directional coupler like this one. This is a 10 dB Mac technology coupler that measures up to 8 GHz. The detector will be connected here. And the antenna you like to measure will be connected here. And the transmitter will be connected here. So basically you could measure the forward voltage BF and if you reverse the coupler you will measure the reverse voltage VR from the detector and you get P once you get P you are able to calculate the SWR Well, this is basically how the DIY 5.8 SWR meter looks like from the inside. Besides the directional coupler and the detector, we have a 6 dB attenuator to protect the transmitter from damage. If an antenna that's way out of tune is being plugged over here. This is the 2S LiPo pack that powers the entire circuitry, basically for the DC bias. There are two resistors. Uh, one of the resistors is used to protect the LED light. And two ceramic capacitors here are code 103, 0.01 microfarad. This is the 500 ohm potential meter, and this is the 100k ohm potential meter. So basically, with this circuitry, you do not need to use the forward and reverse voltages to derive the SWR. Instead, you just have to set this meter to infinity using the 100k potential meter. And once the antenna is plugged in, it gives you the offset reading, which is a fairly accurate reading of the VSWR. Let me get a few antennas and show you how this meter works. Okay, this is the SWR meter. and. I'm now going to measure a few antennas using it but before we can make accurate measurements of the antenna there are some settings that needs to be done the first step is with the transmitter off the battery is not connected we need to ensure that the needle is pointing to the zero so you have to Turn this, make sure that the needle goes to the default zero position. Once that is done, we can power on the transmitter. And then we can turn on the DC bias. The DC bias is turned on now, as you can see from the red LED light 
the next step is to set the DC bias using the 500k port. The right amount of setting would be two needle width. So we have to increase the position of the needle by two needle width. Just a slight bit. Once that is done, we can go ahead and start to take measurements. To take a measurement, we set the meter to infinity using the 100k port. So I max it out, it's now infinity. And now I can plug in the antenna I want to measure. In this case, it's the fat chart clover leaf. It looks like it has an SWR of 1.5. The SWR meter is very sensitive, so if you put your hand besides the SWR will fracture If you turn the antenna around, it should be still in the same range, it shouldn't fluctuate too much. Now I'm going to measure my home main antenna against a good antenna that I bought. This is a home made Krober, sorry, home made crosshair. And this is a 75 USD crosshair that is tuned with a spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to measure this one first. Okay, we have SWR of 1.3. This is homemade crosshair. At microwave frequency, the meter is so sensitive, so that's why I put a piece of paper here so that I will put the meter, I will position the meter back at the exact same spot. Okay, I have 1.3 as well for my homemade, which means that I can make a good crosshair antenna. Okay, to show you that the SWR meter really works, I have the fat shark crowbar leaf and the blue beam crowbar leaf, but this blue beam crowbar leaf has been crashed many times, so it's not going to perform well. Let's take a look at the measurements. Okay, blue beam is about 1.65 and the good crowbar never crashed before So this is a better antenna now than the blue beam because this one has been crashed too many times. And this is SWR 1.4 and this is SWR 1.65. Yeah, basically that's how it works and I hope you enjoy this video. See you around.